Hello, welcome, welcome. So in previous episodes in this series, we've been building this CPU from scratch and we've added quite a bit of functionality so far. We can run it here and you can see that it produces numbers in the registers. So down here we have a display of what the computer is doing. We have an indicator here indicating that it's an add instruction. And it's saying that it will store into R3 uh, 34 plus 399, which it got from R2, which is up here. So it'll store that into R3. And when we advance the clock, so we see indeed 433 was put into R3. So my current issue is I think we need to do some cleanup. I think this is starting to get a little bit messy and there's no room to really expand. Now, I know probably watching me clean this up is maybe not the most interesting in the universe, but I mean, in anything that you build, it's useful to periodically clean up. It helps manage complexity, and if other people are watching what you're doing, which you are, then it makes it a lot easier to follow along when there's not a ton of detail everywhere. So I think there's a few candidates for breaking out into embedded circuits. One would be down here. It feels kind of weird to put like a single building block, a single chip into a separate circuit, but you have to keep in mind that all of these wires going in and out of it add cognitive load, so to speak. So if we abstract that away, it reduces that load. Some part of your brain is interpreting this one here and reading these labels and trying to figure that out, uh, whether you're conscious of it or, or not. So that's kind of my justification for periodically refactoring. Uh, in software, we call it refactoring. In other trades, you might call it just cleaning up or organizing. So without further ado, let's get into cleaning this up. I'm going to call this the fetch unit because it's going to have more than just the program counter in it. There will be some logic for fetching from memory, but for now, it's just the program counter. And I should probably copy this stuff so we can paste it. So we need some inputs and outputs. One of them is a clock input. We also need to be able to load the program counter with a new value. One of the hard things about this is coming up with good names. I'm just going to call this address for now. There we go. That looks like it's working. Always good to test just to make sure there's no bugs. And this program will verify that your inputs and outputs are set to the correct width, which is nice. All right. Let's see if we can replace this part of it with our new module. I think I'd like to switch those inputs. Now we need more room. Hmm. Okay, let's see if this still works. Yes, so it jumped to the correct location and the results look like they are the same. So that's great. So I kind of don't like this part. I want to keep this EEPROM at the highest level because you can then right click on it and see the contents. I don't know how important that is, but I want to get rid of all of these details here somehow. So a really thin module that handles all of this might be useful. Let's try it and see if that makes sense.
So the problem with these names is they will be too wide. Lower case is less wide. I think this will be okay. PM for program memory. I don't know. It's more like a shim, but whatever. Doesn't really save as much space here. Hmm. 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 There we go. I think that's okay. All right. Let's install it. Kind of wish you could just put it like this. <laughs> that would be nice, but you can't. It will error. Oh, that's nice. Automatically connected everything up. That's useful. So I feel like this part here doesn't belong in the decoder. I think it belongs in the fetch unit. So I think I'm going to copy it into the fetch unit. My goal is to try and put the fetch unit in line between the program here and the decoder instead of being a lump off to the side like this. I think that'll work a little bit better. In what order do we want the inputs in? We need prog and bypass on the top, and we probably want to move the clock to the bottom. Yeah. And we want instruction. We want clock on the bottom. Okay. And on the output, we want instruction on top. Okay. Let's zoom out a little bit and move everything over. I'm going to put this down here for now just to. Uh, we'll be really zoomed out for a moment, um, but hopefully we can fix that and just hold you. All right, let's put this here. Mm, actually, the clock might be better above address. There we go. So we can loop our jump here. I wonder if the program counter should go over top. That would probably be cleaner. just was bugging me because it had an R on the end where the other ones don't. So now it just says decode. I feel like this is probably the most complex part of the circuit left. I'm not sure what to do about it though. And we could move A down and RS and RD up so that there's less crossing over other lines here. Let's move these tunnels somewhere else. Let's change the order of A here.
I wonder if these should be swapped then, just to minimize the amount of crossover. I mean, when you're dealing with a circuit like this, the cognitive confusion is every time a line crosses another line, you have to figure out what that means. So you have to basically look for the dots, and your brain is kind of doing that in the background. So I don't like that there's a crossover here, but I'm not sure we can fix that. And this one, though, we can fix just by changing the order of the inputs on these. So let's do that. So another thing that's been bugging me is it's called value here, but then we rename it to A here, and I don't really like that, so let's let's make that more consistent. And actually we could rename that value here as well. Okay, I think this is looking a lot better. So the last thing that I don't like is this crosses over two wires, whereas if it went the other way, it would only cross over one wire. So I think moving that would, would be beneficial. So let's do that. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, of course, we got to make sure that we didn't break anything. <laughs> okay, that looks like it's working. I don't really want to mess with the program right now, so we haven't really tested that everything over here is still working, but it probably is, because the only thing that changed was moving a few things from the decode to the fetch. And this, I guess, right here. But I'm pretty sure all of that is, is working. We can fix that as soon as we, like if we notice there's a bug the next time we're entering in a program, then we can fix it. Okay, I think this is pretty good. I hope a refactoring episode where I clean things up and make it look a little bit more organized is still interesting. In the next episode, we'll get into adding another feature. So thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a great day. Bye.